Alright FTO folks, so in this video we've got a little bit of an update on the track car We're going to be putting some wishbones on, we're going to talk about some Nolathane bushes We're going to talk about camera bolts and we're going to put a track rod end on So time for the neglect to stop, follow me into the garage and we'll do some more FTO work Okay, so starting off here, we've got two lower control arms. We've got some Nalathine bushes from Australia. Uh, we've got a couple of brackets. We've got some bolts, which have all been plated. Ignore the stuff in this corner. That's for the rear suspension. We're going to talk about that a little bit later in the video, and I'll come to a few things I want to mention about that. But for the meantime, what we're going to try and do is we're going to get these thin bushes on these arms, and then we're going to bolt this all up into the car and just give you a quick showdown of how that all goes on I'll film one side and the rest of it is all symmetrical guys there's nothing that you've got to worry about when you're doing left and right they're exactly the same you've basically got two bolts for each of these brackets that bolt up onto the north end bushes from underneath the arms and then you've got a couple of bolts here that go right the way through the suspension bush that you can just see here they bolt it onto the actual chassis of the car so let's start getting things prepped and then we will take it over to the car and we'll get some good lighting in there and we'll show you what we're doing with actually putting it on the car okay so these nolithane bushings i've bought because they were really quite reasonably priced i got them for 27 pounds i think on ebay um uh, part numbers there if you want to see it folks it's rev 030 0126 I was quite surprised actually, they come pretty well packaged, I was expecting something in a jiffy bag from some Chinese seller on eBay but uh, if you search for Nolothane you should see these come up. Now they've come and they look like they're actually quite good quality, they're black polyurethane, um, they're fairly robust feeling but it's obviously difficult to actually tell that until you put it in a car. For the price of them I can't argue and I mean they, they might end up being rubbish but who knows. So it's always the usual sort of thing with polyurethane bushings. Never ever ever grease the outside of the bush but always make sure you grease the bit of bush that's going to come into contact with the arm of the car so it can rotate in there properly. The only difference I can see with these bushes is they don't have the grooves cut in them that you see on the Mitsubishi bushes so I'm not sure they may end up squeaking like crazy, hopefully they don't but we'll give them a little try and we'll see. They fit onto these, uh, these brackets beautifully, there's no problem with that whatsoever. So as you can see the little nub in there is locating it in the, the bracket and that works perfectly for me. Uh, and they actually come in quite a nice little jiffy bag with your receipt in there. They give you a little beer bottle opener, I suppose it's uh, a little trinket. They give you a little pouch of grease. High performance bushing lubricant. They give you a couple of little uh, key ring things. So you can go and rep the Nolathane brand all across the world, wherever you're going. I just think it's quite nicely presented, you know, it's unusual to get something like that for cheap on eBay and then be presented with a kit like this. So uh, I'll report obviously on how they work and what they feel like when we've got the car on the road, but you know, first impressions are pretty good with them. So, okay, so there is a front left and a front right. Uh, this is the front left arm, this is the front right arm. On the bushing itself, I don't know if you can make that out on camera, but it does say here front right stamped in the, uh, the outside of the bush. And here we've got front left. The bottom part of the bush obviously has got set in a bracket with your little nubbin. So obviously when we put the bush on the arm, we're going to have it orientated upwards like so. We'll take our lube, giving us what looks like molybdenum disulfide. And we'll liberally smear this all over the pin. And we'll actually give a little bit inside the bush as well. Right, and then from what I've seen already, these are pretty easy to slip on these arms. So we'll pop them on just by hand. Yep, no problem whatsoever. Right, now all I've done with the arms is I've given them a quick lick of paint. I've not done anything fancy with them. They've got the same ball joints in. We've got the same inner bushes in. We changed these because we've already used the ones that were on this car on the road going FTO. If any of you have watched the videos about that one. So we wanted nice new fresh bushes for here. So we're pretty much ready to put this in the car. I'm going to jump down there, I'm going to sort some lighting out and then we'll uh, take the camera down there and we'll show you what we need to do just to pop these on the car. It's dead easy, it's only a couple of bolts and a nut. Okay, so back down here with the car, we've got brake disc in front of me obviously. Lower arm is going to pop straight in and up here into the bracketry. The bush is going to sit up underneath the car, which I'll just get a filming of once we've 
bolted it up obviously it's a bit difficult on my own and then the ball joint's going to engage into the lower hub so back down here at the car all i've done at the moment is i've just pushed the arm up into that little uh, pocket there where the bush is going to sit the only thing bushing is up where my right hand is and then the ball joint there that you can just see at the bottom of my hand is going to locate up into the hub so i'm going to start off by popping my big 17 millimeter bolt all the way through that bush at the back this is probably the trickiest part is just getting this bush to line up correctly but a bit of a wiggle and we should get there fairly easily there we go threads just poking out that little uh, I don't know what you call that little pocket there I'll just get my hand in there put this nut on right so it can't go anywhere now so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get underneath and we'll pop our bracket on which is only going to go one way around as you can see is a different level to it so one side slightly higher than the other okay so as we said the higher side towards the inside of the car remember we've got to locate that little lump in the bottom of the bush before we bolt anything up we'll get the bolts in just just on a couple of threads okay and what we've done around here, I don't know if you're able to make it out on cameras, we've just got the nut just on top of the ball joint. There's still loads of play in it, we've not tightened that up yet. But this nut will interfere with the CV joint above it. So you've got to get the thread of the nut on and then slowly start working it down the actual ball joint pin before you can engage it tightly. So, we'll just grab some tools and then we'll come back and we'll tighten up some of these nuts and bolts. Okay, so we just spin this in with a wheelie gun. Seventeen millimeter nut, seventeen millimeter bolt. We'll use the ratchet on the other side because the car's a little bit too low to get this underneath it. So we'll just grab that. Okay, so I'm just checking the bush at this point to make sure the little nubbin's engaged, so the bush can't rotate on its own. It is, so we'll tighten it all the way up now. So we're done up on both these. We've got our fancy bolt in here, nicely tightened up. All we've got to deal with now is the ball joint. So, unfortunately, the only way to do that is by spanner. Uh, if you've got ratchet spanners, that would help. I don't for a 17 millimeter, unfortunately. So, what I'm just going to do is by feel, I'm going to work this nut. I don't know if you can see that. All the way down this ball joint thread. So, I think on this one that I've got here. I may have a 19 millimeter nut, so that's going to vary depending on where you bought your ball joints. So there isn't really a trick to this, this is just a bit of a slow grinding process of turning it a couple of turns at a time. And when you get to the point where there's a lot of tension on the nut and it's turning the ball joint, what you want to do then is get a bit of force underneath the ball joint, stick your knee under there or a block of wood and that should hold the ball joint tight whilst you're doing that up guys. Let's see how we're getting on. Right we're getting nowhere there so I think we'll jack her up. Okay so all we've done is we put a little block of wood underneath the arm, jack the arm up and we'll try that again. Let's have a little look and see what we get this time. So one of the other jobs we're going to go do today is we're going to swap out these track rod ends. They cost very little and it's something that we want to have brand new in the car and some of the eagle eyed of you might have spotted up on the workbench a moment ago. So we'll just spin the old one off. You've seen me do this before so I'm not going to elaborate on it too much folks. For those of you that have seen this before, I'm not too fussy about counting my turns here as long as it's there or thereabouts because this car is obviously going to go into tracks so it's going to have full four wheel wheel alignment before it goes anywhere near a track so we'll get it on so it's uh, secure and safe and then later on we'll have the whole thing aligned so here we go and then that just locates in the hub as they always do nice and simple and easy with an eyelock knocking up at the bottom I think this is 17 millimeter we'll I've already put a bit in the thread, we'll just make sure we don't have any seized nuts. Got one lower arm on. We've got it all nicely bolted up underneath the 
car there with the no thin bushes. We've got our nice fresh bolt in the background there, buried in the arm. And then we've got our ball joint all bolted up at the bottom there with our track rod on. Okay, so I promised at the start of the video just to show you a little bit about what we've got going on here. Um, we have got a couple of rear trailing arms that look somewhat similar to this for the back of the car. Uh, anyone familiar with FTOs will know that we're missing uh, one important part of this, which is the lower suspension arm that sits here. Um, just a brief rundown, you've seen me do it before, but we've got dog bone polyurethane bushes in here. I've got new bolts in here because they were rotten to hell, the ones that were on the car. Uh, and the reason there's no arm here is because we've got two of them over here. And to give you a bit of a basic idea of what I've had a nightmare with recently, I have pressed new bushes into this arm. And as you can see, we've got the spherical bearing bush in this side, rubber bush in this side. Looking pretty good, quite happy with that one, not too much of a problem. This one didn't go so well. Uh, as you can see, from the bottom of this arm, this is a U-shaped piece of metal. Now the top spherical bush has got a collar that sits inside the arm, the bottom one doesn't. So you suffer from the inevitable problem of as you try and push the bush through from this side, these two halves want to close up. You can see here where I've tried to weld a plate on. Now I completely foobarred the bush as I was putting it in there. Um, made a right royal cock up of it and I've ended up now with an arm that looks like this that's completely, pardon my French, but fucking useless. So, we're going to have to throw this arm away, rather sadly, but we have got some new arms coming in the pipeline, which are anodized aluminium arms, already with the bushes pressed in, which are four Mitsubishi Lancer. Now, we're going to use these under um, a bit of duress, they're obviously a bit more expensive than we'd like to spend, but they should be stiffer. They should fit the car without any problems regarding the bushes. The only problem we've got is dealing with the anti-roll bar drop links. Now, we've got adjustable drop links to go in this car, so I'm not going to worry too much about that at the moment, but I want to make a, a big shout out to the FT owners, FTO Owners Club UK. Um, a lot of the information that we've gleaned, that we use to put this car together and to fix this car, comes from, yes, my past experience of working on cars, but it also comes from reading posts with guys that have done these things all before. Um, and on FTOOC, there is a quite extensive post talking about using these Lancer arms on an FTO and about the adjustments needed with the anti-roll bar drop link to actually make the brackets fit. So check back with us once we've got that. I'm hoping that we don't need to fettle it because we've got adjustable drop links already, but we'll come to that a, uh, as the bridge comes to us. The reason we're pressing new bushes in is because of these things. The bushes were fine. These are camber bolts of which the FTO has four. Um, some of you will have seen this sort of thing before, some of you won't. This is a genuine Mitsubishi one uh, and this is a knockoff Chinese one. The purpose for these is basically so they sit in part of the chassis and as you rotate the bolt it acts like a cam and moves either the small dog bone that you've seen in or out or the lower control arm in or out. Now, these were plated with zinc when they came out of the Mitsubishi factory and they're all completely rotten and shot to shit. So they all snapped on me as I was trying to undo them, even though I'd already learned my lesson with another car. Um, I was being extremely careful uh, and unfortunately, they cost a lot of money. Uh, the cheapest we could find the genuine Mitsubishi ones, complete with the special washer on the end and the nut and a spring washer, which we've got over here, was 15 pounds, I think. I managed to find this single bolt here which fits a Mitsubishi Lancer or a Pajero, I think. Um, it came without the washer and without the nut. Important point to mention, this nut here and this thread on the ones that I bought and I think... I think the ones from Mitsubishi, let's just test that. They have a very, very strange thread pitch. They've got an M12 by 1.2 thread pitch. So let me just check that with this one here. Yeah, the nut that I bought seems to fit perfectly on both. So if you're going to go and buy this bolt as it is, like you can see it here, with no nut on it and no washer, then you're going to need an M12 by 1.2, not a 1.25 and not a 1.5, an M12 by 1.2 nut to fit on that thread. 
and that slots on there beautifully as you can see guys right so come back for the next video that will hopefully be showing you the rear suspension going on the car we're waiting for the parts to arrive we've got all the rest of the bolts in there apart from that that's pretty much us so all right so there you go nice easy job two wishbones put on the front of the fto uh, keep your eyes peeled for the next video where we're going to get the rear suspension on and then we're going to roll the car out and we'll do a tap adjustment on the front bank. Little sneak peek behind me, we've actually received the arms already. Nice bit of red anodized material there with some lovely polyurethane bushes. No more spherical bushes, no more pissing about with stupid U-shaped bits of pressed steel. Love it. Pay more out guys.